Hey there, good morning. It is time to pause to pray on this lovely Thursday morning. Please, as you are joining me, let me know where you are joining from. My name is Stephanie Schindler, joining you uh, this morning from the Atlanta, Georgia area where we have sunshine. For the first time in like a week and a half, it's been cloudy and rainy and actually kind of cozy and beautiful because I love those kind of days. But today it's like the sun is coming in full force. So I hope your day is going well and I hope that you are ready for a brief study in the book of Isaiah with me this morning. We will be studying in the 13th chapter of the book of Isaiah. So if you want to grab your Bibles, give you a couple minutes to do that as I greet everybody this morning. Hope your Christmas plans are in full swing and that you are, um, I know Melody, aren't you so grateful for the sunshine? She doesn't live too terribly far away and we've had just constant cloudy, rainy, wet days. Snowy Minnesota. Hello, Marianne. Welcome. Got Amy in Indiana. Well, hope you guys are all doing well on your Christmas plans and you're getting ready maybe for some travels. My kids have their last two days of school and we're looking forward to a break. I don't know about you guys. We got Joanne praying from Northern Nevada. Welcome. Got Chris from Kansas City, Missouri. Your mom needs prayers. She has a new tumor on her right lung. Mm, that's not okay. So Lord, we lift up uh, Chris's mother this morning and we just pray over that tumor. In the name of Jesus, we speak peace. We speak healing. We speak life into her lungs and we pray for the tumor uh, that is not welcome to be present in her body to shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. We bless her today, Lord Jesus. Uh, good morning, Mary in New Mexico. Hey, Gigi, my friend in Memphis. Great to see you, friends. Heather, Helena, Montana, welcome. Glad you're here with us as well. Sunshine does do the heart some good. Puchu, welcome. Great to see you. Very cold there in the UK, yes. I think it's very cold in a lot of the US right now, but we just happen to be having a sunny day, so... Um, I actually tend to really like cold rainy days because we don't get so many of them, but when you've had them for a week and a half straight, it's like, oh, sunshine. Cold New Hampshire, yep, some more snow tonight. Yeah, Adam's in DC today and they were expecting some ice and hopefully pray that he gets home tonight. He's trying to get home. Alina in California. Gail is in New Nebraska, welcome. All right, from freezing New York. Welcome, Carol. Great to see you. Well, guys, let me let me jump in today and give you just a quick um, some context for where we're joining with this thirteenth chapter today in the book of Isaiah. Um, we've kind of switched gears from the introduction of the book of Isaiah. We're now moving into some heavier chapters, which are more about the, the oracles or the woes or the judgments that are coming against the various nations. And the first one today is the prophecy, the woe against Babylon. So we're going to be speaking some about Babylon today. What I think Babylon is in our current culture, how we're experiencing that, and uh, maybe, just maybe, what the Lord is doing uh, to come against the spirit of Babylon. Um, my dog has decided to run and grab her bone and start very noisily chewing on it right now, which is not a great moment. So pause one moment while I grab this bone from her. <laughs> Okay, pardon that little brief interruption while I made sure that the space was quiet for you guys so that you can, in fact, hear. So anyhow, back to Babylon. We are going to be talking about Babylon and the judgment against Babylon, okay? 
Y'all, I'm not a biblical scholar. I did not study this in school. I am somebody that is being trained by the Lord to study the scripture. So I am sure there are people that are way more learned in the understanding of who Babylon really is. But I'm going to give you my brief take on what I believe the Lord has shown me about what Babylon represents. Babylon goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel. This is where we begin to see the introduction of this uh, spirit, uh, whatever you want to call what this is. But Babel goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel that was built um, by Nimrod very shortly after the flood, right? So as the, as the earth is wiped clean, we begin to see the reemergence of, um, well, we would just say, I would say sin in the earth. And Babel to me represents, particularly in this instance of the Tower of Babel, what man can accomplish, what man can do on their own, apart and separate from God. And I think that we see that theme play out throughout scripture. And we can even see Babylon uh, is addressed in the end times in a really significant way. Uh, uh, Revelation 17 and 18 speak much about the fall of the end times fall of Babylon and who this spirit really was. She is described as a harlot and all the nations have partaken of her um, and the Lord is calling his people out from her. Flee from Babylon. Uh, the flee from Babylon command is given even in the prophecies of the book of Isaiah. Now, remember, Isaiah was written 150 years before these things even took place. But Israel is called out from amongst this land, this people, this culture, this nation. Um, now, interestingly enough, what one of the things the Lord really highlighted to me this week is that the Lord chooses this Babel spirit, this Babylon, uh, which I believe is, um, I think the, the spirit of Babylon is a political spirit. I think it is a religious spirit. I think, uh, again, man-made, it's all about what man can do, right? The power of man, the accomplishments of man, which can be great, right? What they were able to accomplish. that, And the nation itself of Babylon was a beautiful one. They had amazing gardens and everything that they were able to accomplish as a people was certainly impressive. But once again, noteworthy is without God. Okay, so... Uh, Babylon is the nation that the Lord chooses to have his people taken away and led into exile. Now, why specifically? I'm not sure that scripture says, but I think it's interesting that the Lord says, to me, this is what I hear him saying, you have kept your hearts far from me. You've tried to do your nation and your life without me, Israel. Well, go and live amongst Babylon for a while. Go and live without me. Go and live amongst this people. And we'll see here in this scripture, we'll see some of the defining characteristics of Babylon were pride, arrogance, and tyrannical rule. Okay? So that's just a little introduction into I, who I think Babylon is? Do we see that playing out in our nation, in our world, excuse me, today? Yes, definitely in our nation, in our world. I think most definitely we are seeing this play out in the earth. Um, it's also got kind of this one world, like we can rule the world. They were all about power and wealth, greed. Uh, I definitely think that that spirit is alive and well in the earth right now. I think we've got this very, uh, almost not even trying to hide it anymore, one world rule type of spirit that is in the earth. So do I think that this chapter is going to be relevant to things that we are seeing, uh, the tyrannical rule and the arrogant rule that we are seeing today with elitists, global elitists that are trying to run uh, everything, everyone? right? Um, shutting down anybody that's coming against them, right? It is it is a tyrannical uh, rule of law right now that we are experiencing in the earth. So with that, um, I'm going to offer up some interesting characters today that I'm, I'm going to get to those in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and read the passage and then I'm going to get to some interesting characters that I think may be relevant to what the Lord calls forth 
in this, starting in this chapter. So Isaiah chapter 13, hopefully that context is all helpful for you. If you've got insight into Babylon, I would love for you to put it in the thread. Um, because like I said, I am not a scholar of these things. I'm just a study, studier of the word of God, a lover of Jesus and trying to understand the revelation truth of what God is speaking to us because he has said very clearly to me in particular that we need to be in the book of Isaiah as we're living through these times to have understanding and context for what we're going through. So Isaiah chapter 13 in verse one. Reading out of the Amplified today, I have people ask that pretty regularly. The mournful inspired oracle, a burden to be carried concerning Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw in a prophetic vision. It says, lift up a signal banner on the bare mountain. Summon them with a loud voice. The Amplified clarifies here that summoning them is referencing the Medes and the Persians, which we are going to talk about today. Wave the beckoning hand so that they may enter the doorways of the Babylonian nobles. I, the Lord, have commanded my consecrated ones and have even called my great warriors, my proudly exulting ones, the Medes and the Persians who triumph for my honor. Listen to how he is describing this people, these Medes and Persians, which I haven't talked about yet, but we're going to. He's describing them as his great warriors, his proudly exulting ones. So he, he's calling forth these, this people, the Medes and the Persians. He says, to execute my anger. A sound of tumult on the mountains like that of many people. A sound of the uproar of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts is mustering an army for battle. They are coming from a distant country, from the end of the earth. Sorry, from the end of heaven, the farthest horizon. The Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Wail, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty God. Therefore, all hands will fall limp and every man's heart will melt. Verse 8, they of Babylon will be shocked and terrified. Pains and anguish will grip them. Remember, this is a people marked by arrogance and pride and human capability, what they are able to accomplish on their own. But even they cannot stand against the Lord on the day of his judgment. So they of Babylon will be shocked and terrified. Pains and anguish will grip them. They will be in pain like a woman in childbirth. They will stare aghast and horrified at one another. Their faces aflame from the effects of the unprecedented warfare. Listen carefully. The day of the Lord is coming. Cruel with wrath and raging anger to make the land a horror of devastation. And he shall exterminate its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not flash their light. The sun will be dark when it rises and the moon will not shed its light. In this way, I will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their wickedness. Listen to this. These are, I think, really significant judgments here that he's laying against them. He said, I will also put an end to the arrogance of the proud and will abase the arrogance of the tyrant. I love that verse right there because how many of us are feeling that cry in our hearts? That he will put an end to the arrogance of the proud and will abase or humiliate the arrogance of the tyrant. Continuing on, verse 12. I will make a mortal, mortal man more rare than fine gold and mankind scarcer than the pure gold of Ophir. Therefore, I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his burning anger. 
And like the hunted gazelle or like sheep that no man gathers, each foreign resident will turn and go back to his own people and each one flee to his own land. Anyone who is found will be pierced through and anyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their children also will be smashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives ravished. Verse 17, listen carefully. I will put the Medes in motion against them. They who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold and therefore cannot be bribed. I'm going to come back to verse 17 here in just a moment. Let me finish the passage and then I'm going to talk to you about what I feel the Lord uh, shared with me this week, what he highlighted to me this week. So they, again, the Medes who have no regard for silver and do not delight in gold, therefore cannot be bribed. Their bows will cut down the young men of Babylon. They will take no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not look with compassion on the children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, will be in that day like Sodom and Gomorrah when God overthrew them. Babylon will never be inhabited or lived in from generation to generation, nor will the Arab pitch his tent there, nor will the shepherds let their sheep lie down there, but desert creatures will lie down there and their houses will be full of owls. Ostriches also will live there and wild goats will dance there. Hyenas will howl in their castles and jackals in their luxurious palaces." Babylon's time has nearly come and her days will not be prolonged. That is the judgment leveled in the first part of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah against Babylon. So now, how many of you would love to see this happen to the pride and arrogance and the tyrannical rule of Babylon? I would, personally. Uh, Babylon, who is marked with idolatry and self and greed and power. They were a power-hungry people that came in trying to invade the nations. Now, I called my husband Adam last night, who's in D.C. this week, because he has read many, many things about uh, the nations and the empires that were in place around this time. And um, he read a book, uh, I believe, called Persian Fire, uh, within the last year that gave a lot of historical context for this particular time period. And so I asked him to help give me some understanding about these peoples and who, who we were dealing with. And most assuredly, he said, you know, Babylon was definitely very much about power and greed, wealth, uh, the invading and the taking over of the nations. They were just a, a moving force. They were not going to be stopped. They wanted it all. Right, And so I think we still see that playing out today. But the Medes and the Persians, which I am going to give you even a tiny snippet of even what he gave me, which was a tiny snippet of all of his vast wealth of knowledge about these things. Um, the Medes and the Persians were very different. They were actually a people group. And if he's listening, he's going to be like, no stuff. No, <laughs> you're missing it. That's not what I said. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to... Um, paraphrase what he told me, but they were a people that were um, a much smaller nation, were not marked by greed and wealth, were not beholden to silver and gold, as Isaiah 13 says, but they were more motivated by truth and justice. They were not a people that worshiped Yahweh. They worshiped this God Marduk, but they did care about truth and justice in their land. And a couple of the noteworthy people who were uh, Medes and Persians were Cyrus and Darius, um, both of which ruled over Babylon. Both of them came in to replace, when God comes in to tear down Babylon, he replaces them with the media Persian rule. And Cyrus, who is much prophesied about in the book of Isaiah, which are some of my favorite chapters in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 45 uh, being the most famous one. Cyrus was a man, again, who did not know the Lord, but the Lord used him and not just, not just a, a random ruler, but like spent a large amount of time in his word speaking to him and calling out to him and wooing him. 
And so I do believe that the Lord uh, raised up these people, Darius and Cyrus, to come in. And much like he used Sennacherib and Nebuchadnezzar, which are part of the Assyrian and Babylonian empires, he raised up Cyrus uh, to come and do his purpose. Now, again, they were not beholden to silver and gold. Why is that? Well, I think their culture was different. They were more religiously motivated. But one interesting thing to note about Cyrus uh, they were a wealthy nation, by the way, but they were, uh, he was all about, Adam told me that one of his big things that he was doing in his nation first, and then he went and extended this empire, was to root out what he called the big lie, which I think is almost hilarious. <laughs> I'm reading Marianne's comment, Isaiah 13 is America today. Ah. Uh, Yes, because we are marked by the Babylonian culture, right? Um, but Cyrus came in to root out what he called the big lie. Oh, it says I'm freezing up. I'm so sorry. Hopefully that's not happening on my end. Um, so he, he did this in his culture first, in his nation first, and then he went and took it into the nations. And so I, I think it's very interesting this week, I want to ask you, and I'll, I'll wrap this up and make it brief here. I want to ask you to consider some of the people that the Lord is raising up in the earth right now that may not necessarily be worshipers of Yahweh. They may not be uh, worshipers of Jesus, although they might be, uh, but they may be being raised up for such a time as this to, to carry out the plans, purposes, and judgments of the Lord and the earth. And I want to make the note of the two men that the Lord just continues to highlight because they're everywhere. The, the world is practically obsessed with them, um, but Trump and Musk. These kind of rogue characters that aren't necessarily uh, marked by the Spirit of God. You don't necessarily think that they've been called forth as a prophet, you know, like an Isaiah would be. But the Lord has raised them up to stand up against this Babylonian spirit in the earth. And so as I was reading this this week and reading about the Medes and the Persians that the Lord called forth, who were not beholden to silver and gold, who were not after the arrogance and, and, and uh, pride and greed and power hungry that the Babylonian empire empire is marked by, but they were, they care about truth and justice. They care about rooting out the lies that are being forced upon us in our culture. And so I just encourage you, um, I'm not, I don't have like a black and white, you know, this is, this is the truth about these two men. Um, I've been called personally to pray for Donald Trump for several years now. Um, and Musk has come on the scene and is doing what I believe is, is so um, just in the face of, of so many of the lies that have been perpetuated throughout the earth. For them to come and stand boldly against these things, uh, to take action at risk of their own, their own wealth, right, their own businesses, these men have come and stood boldly for what I would call truth and justice. And I'm I'm on the fence kind of about both of them as far as like where their allegiance is in their hearts, but that's not for me to decide. That's for the Lord and, and between them and the Lord. But the Lord, I believe, is raising them up for a very specific purpose um, to establish truth and justice once again. Now, Trump was trying to do it first here in America, right? America first, and then take that truth out into the nations. But we've seen both of these men brutally attacked, accused, assaulted um, by everybody that's, you know, running the show <laughs> in the world, which is, it's still kind of bizarre to watch this all play out. But I just want to encourage you guys this week. One, the Lord is going to come fight for us. And I'm actually going to read you a word that my son gave me this week to close today. Um, oh, and I just lost it. Um, the Lord is going to come against this Babylonian rule, the arrogance and the tyrannical rule that we have been under and has been getting exposed on a large scale here for the last several years. The Lord is going to come and deal with the Babylonian spirit that is alive and present in the earth today. Um, sorry, still reading comments. Yes, Trump, Cyrus, yes. And of course, and I didn't say this, but there have been many, if you do not already know this, let me 
bring you into the know that there have been many, many, many prophecies about Trump being a Cyrus and that Isaiah 45 uh, picture of Cyrus, uh, which is one of my favorite chapters in Isaiah, um, happened to also line up with our 45th president, just interestingly enough. Um, but the Lord is going to come and fight against the Babylonians, and he may be raising up some people. He may be raising up some like he raised up the Medes and the Persians, this empire that came in to wipe out the Babylonian rule uh, in their time. Uh, the Lord may be raising up similar characters and people groups in our time to do this. And I want to encourage you that though they may not be marked by the Spirit of the Lord and they may not be prophets straight from the kingdom of heaven, the Lord has historically done this, that he raises up those. If they care about any kind of good and truth and justice, he will raise them up and use them to pull down the wickedness in the earth. And I want to encourage you guys to pray for these men. Pray for these people that the Lord places on your heart that that may be kind of these rogue characters that we don't fully understand, but the Lord is using them. Um, yeah. So I know that may be a little controversial. Again, I don't, I'm not, I'm on the fence kind of about both of these men in many cases, less so about Trump because we've seen so much of his heart and his character. And I, I know enough about him personally to know that he is, a, he is in fact a very good man. Um, and we know that the, the enemy just hates him. But Musk is kind of this new guy on the scene and to see what he's doing um, at Twitter and, and who knows what else is he's got up his sleeve. I just think it's really interesting that he too seems to be caring very much about truth and revealing those things to the earth. And I encourage you guys to pray for these people, whether you fully understand them or not, just know that the Lord uses these kinds of people. He has always used these kinds of people and we ought to pray for them <clears throat> regardless of our personal you know affections for them now i want to share with you in closing today um, my son whose name happens to be judah who is 12 years old um last week we have a home group that we uh are a part of and for Christmas instead of doing a, a white elephant gift exchange we drew names and did a white elephant prophetic word uh, it was actually more of a secret Santa sorry not white elephant it was actually a secret Santa so we drew names and then for two weeks we prayed for that person and asked the Lord for a word for them a, a verse for them something encouraging to speak to them a picture and this is all generations, you know, all the way up from grandparents down to little kids. And they all participated. And I cannot tell you how sweet it was. Like even some of the kids got some of the adults and just um, just blew them away with what the Lord had spoken to these little children. And so um, our kids kind of got in practice of doing this, of, of hearing a word from the Lord for somebody and being able to encourage, just a simple word of encouragement. I mean, who doesn't want to train your children in that? Am I right? So my son, who got a little bit of practice, um, he was reading, my son loves to read the Bible. Like he, he loves to read, but he's reading the Bible, like cover to cover, he is reading it. And so he was in the book of Samuel this week and he, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted by comments. I'm going to keep going. He, he was reading this week and he read a verse and he said, this word is for my mom. I want you to read this. And so when I was thinking through today, what I wanted to read with you guys, I thought, I think this is a word for pause to pray. I think that this is what the Lord is saying this week as we read this oracle against the Babylonian spirit and what so many of us have been under and the weariness that we've been under um, for years now. Um, I just felt like this was a word of encouragement for you guys today. So I'm gonna read to you 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord will be broken to pieces. He will thunder against them in the heavens. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth and he will give strength to his king and will exalt the horn of his anointed. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we bless you today. Our hearts just well up with affection for you and all that you are to us, all that you have been 
doing to lead and guide us back to your heart. We are so grateful for your welcoming, forgiving love for us, that you are waiting with open arms for your children to run back home to you. And let us be the first to do so. Let the remnant be the first to run back into your arms. So we just, we just worship you today, Father God. We bless you. We bless all that your hand is at work doing today. We know that you are seated and ruling and reigning above all that is transpiring in the earth. And we are, we're sitting here underneath it, oftentimes forgetting that you are Ult, you're so in control. You're so in charge of what is happening in the earth. And so we just turn our worship and our trust and our faith towards you today. And we thank you, Father God, that you see the sins of our adversaries, that they have um, waged a war against the peoples of the earth over the last, well, who knows how long, uh, but the last few years in particular, we've begun to feel this oppressive, tyrannical rule over us, and the arrogance is definitely felt. And so today, we thank you, God, that you see our adversaries, you see the plans, plots, and schemes of everything that they have set up in the earth, and we thank you, God, that you will bring your judgment against them, that you will not allow them to, to go without end. Um, and I just want to read this, this last verse of Isaiah 13 again. Babylon, Babylon's time has nearly come and her days will not be prolonged. And we thank you, God, today that you will deal with Babylon. We cannot deal with her. We cannot deal with this spirit, this political spirit, this, this spirit that seeks to rule everyone um, without you, God, we cannot stand against that, but we know that you see it and that you will. And so today we thank you for this verse in 1 Samuel 2 that you sent to my son, my 12-year-old son, and we just proclaim and declare that today. 1 Samuel 2, 10, that you will deal with your adversaries, you will judge them, you will thunder from the heavens, but you will also give strength to your king and you will exalt the horn of your anointed one. We bless you for that today, God. And God, we also want to raise up to you today those that you are using right now in the earth to stand and come against this arrogant, tyrannical Babylonian rule that is in the earth right now. We thank you for these men and women that you are raising up, uh, a couple that we know that are above the surface. We pray for Trump and we pray for Musk and the plans and purposes that you have for them. We ask that not one single thing that you have planned for their lives would be thwarted by the schemes and weapons of the enemy. We just pray for and bless their path, that you would give them strength and courage to stand strong, to be resolved in their commitment to truth and justice. And we ask that that would be established once again in our land. And we thank you, God, that by whatever means necessary, you are healing our land. We thank you, God, that you are delivering us from this oppressive rule, and that as you deliver us, we get to take that deliverance into the whole earth, which is now under this rule of the Babylonian spirit. And so we thank you, God, that you have a plan that is so much bigger than my mind can even understand right now. We thank you that you are doing things in the earth that are so beautiful that we will look back and we will just be in awe of everything you have planned and done. You are turning the tables on the plans and schemes of the enemy. What the enemy thought they were accomplishing in the earth, you are going to turn it back around on them. And we thank you, God, that you are doing something so beautiful and spectacular in this hour that everything that you have started, you will work out for our good. You are bringing forth such beautiful revival and harvest through all of this. And we celebrate you today. We celebrate your mighty power. We celebrate the ones that you are using right now, raising up right now, uh, to stand against this wickedness. We love you, Jesus. We trust in you, Jesus. We ask all of these things in your name. Amen. Okay, so I hope that you um, 
got something out of Isaiah 13 and that it feels relevant to what we're going through today. I did see some comments and I would love to go back and read them all. I'm trying to do a quick make every day. I'm going to read this. Uh, make every day prayers for all who stand to make America great again, one nation under God. Beautiful. Perfect. Love that prayer. That's a great prayer. Anybody that is for the cause of establishing uh, the greatness and bringing this nation back under God, I am all for. And uh, yeah, so uh, what the enemy sought to do for evil, the Lord is turning it around for good. And that's just truly what I believe is happening in the earth right now. So be strong, friends. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. The Lord is fighting for us. He is raising up people in the natural who will who are literally fighting for us and taking some punches while they're at it. So I do encourage you guys to pray for them. Thank you guys for joining for Pause to Pray, and we will see you again tomorrow for another time where Adam will be sharing with us. Y'all have a blessed day.